Looking at the financial overview for the financial periods 21 and 22, if you look at our financial period 22, you will see that the biggest impact has been recapitalization due to the size of the transaction and also the network transition as that continued to change our gross margin and even our operating expenses. Looking at the high level income statement performance between 2021 and 22, you do see a reduction in our revenue. Primarily, this is due to an accounting change in our handsets. This is because we have stopped being principal and are now agent in that agreement as part of the postpaid book. There is also a reduction in our prepaid book, which primarily resulted in this reduction. From a gross margin perspective, this has continued to reduce, but this is due and aligned to our network strategy as we continue to increase our roaming costs. Our operating expenses, however, have shown a significant decline year on year. Although the recapitalization costs have remained high in each year, we've continued to implement stringent controls on the balance of the expenditure and have seen some savings relating to the network transition. Our then EBITDA movement does show a big movement downwards between the two years from a profit of 222 million in one year to a loss of 907 million in the next. And this is as a result mainly of the change in our gross margin and the reduction in our revenues. When you normalize the EBITDA for 2022 and 2021, you then pick out that an other income of 352 was a one-off in 2021, which did not repeat in 2022. That primarily related to a sale of assets that would not repeat. We started the initiative to sell our assets in 2021, thus you don't see the same impact in 2022. You can see the materiality of their spend on recap in both years between 2021 and 22, averaging approximately 1.2 billion for 21 and 1.1 billion for 2022. The normalized EBITDA thus for 2021 would then be 1 billion from a reported number of 222 million. Looking at FY22, from a loss of 907 million, if you normalize that number, it should be a profit of 214 million, which means there's an operational impact between the years of approximately 832 million. That operational impact can be split into two components, the biggest one being the change in the operating model. As we continue to transition, the impact then is within our operating costs and within our direct costs, primarily in roaming. And that impact of a circa 300 million has thus led to a negative impact on an operational view between the two years. The balance of the movements then relate to core performance, uh, which talks mostly to just an increase in other spend and a reduction in revenue, primarily due in prepaid. Looking at the income statement below EBITDA, depreciation and amortization continues to reduce. This is in line with the network strategy as it started in 2021 and relates to the reduction in our asset base. This also talks to the reduction in the impairment year on year. Our financing costs have remained high during the years. This is due to the fact that recap was only finalized in September of 2022, thus the related interest would have been in place for most of the year. On other gains, the bulk of the 2022 other gains relate to the debt concessions that happened as part of recapitalization. The FY21 other gains related to the network transition changes that were being done to the fixed asset register. Our net income and loss positions have swung dramatically between the year, mostly due to recap. From a balance sheet perspective, our non-current assets show the reduction as aligned to the network strategy as we continue to decommission assets. Our current assets have grown in line with the growth in the business so far from a prepaid and postpaid perspective, mostly driven by the postpaid. Our non-current liability composition has changed year on year. In FY21, that was made up of leases. And in FY22, that is made up of 70% loans and the rest being leases. This change is due to the recapitalization. Our current liabilities in 2021 were made up of 9 billion rands worth of interest-bearing debt that had been due, hence classified as current. In FY22, there is no long-term or interest-bearing debt within current liabilities. The net movements and other current liabilities has seen a swing or an increase of about 1 billion, and that relates mostly to just normal trading. Our negative equity position has improved as we had expected with recapitalization. That improvement is expected to then continue 
as we continue on the journey for recap, which is expected to take a further five years. Externally, what the industry would have seen is Celsius would have remained in the top 30 brands in FY22. Our total consumer base was 10.6 million. This speaks mostly to consumer, which is our prepaid and postpaid book. We have also calculated our ARPU on that basis. The ARPU that we've reflected historically was a total revenue for the entity over the base. We have aligned to industry to just ensure that that talks to consumer. For the periods FY21 and FY22, we've continued to report on a net revenue basis to align to the audited financial results, whereas this will change going into quarter three and 2023 specifically to speak to a gross revenue number. As we step into 2023, we do see some changes start to happen within the business. At September year to date, you see that our revenue remains fairly flat, but the story is in how the business has performed between the different quarters. Our operating expenditure has continued to increase, and that is in line with the network transition. We finalized that transition in June of 23, and thus you see an increase of roaming costs going forward. But this has been netted off by some efficiency drives within other direct costs. And this then flows all the way through to our gross margin. If you then take our year-to-date number and split it between the respective quarters, if you look at H1 of this year, which is Jan to June of 2023, you will see that versus prior year, our revenue had been reducing and this had been driven by a reduction in our prepaid base. Our direct costs had remained higher and this aligns to our network strategy, which we then completed as mentioned in June of 23. The gross margins then would move in tandem, but there had been some good efficiency savings that had been received on other lines within our direct costs. From a revenue perspective, in the quarter, you're starting to see growth, which is quite important for the business, and the growth is also premised mainly in our prepaid space. Our direct costs have continued to increase, but this is in line with the network transition, and we had expected this. This does lead to our gross margin being lower than it had been at this time last year. I think for us as a business, the most important thing is to start seeing that growth, as George had mentioned. And outside in the market, what we will see is that Salsi continues to remain in the top 30 brands in the country. Although our base has reduced to 8.2 million, that is due mostly to an implementation of churn rule, which is normal within industry that we implemented in May. The total churn of customers amounted to 2.5 million users, and hence the reduction in our base year on year. Our blended ARPU is reflective of the consumer space in total. This would be both prepaid and postpaid, and you're seeing an increase in that blended ARPU. This blended ARPU is now reflected at gross revenue in line with the rest of the industry. And now onto some of the key focus areas. Critically important to talk about the new org structure to make sure that we're perfectly set up going forward. We have a chief of staff strategy and business transformation. We have a new chief marketing officer. We have changed job titles to make sure that we are fully aligned on the intentions of what we want to deliver. So chief people officer. We want to make sure that we've got a chief technology officer to deliver not only on our network transition and our CapEx light model, but also from an IT perspective that we really compete favorably. We have our chief financial officer that's with me today, chief of wholesale business so we can really capitalize on the MVNO opportunities. We have a chief restructuring officer and then of course three new roles to ensure that everything we do is a data-driven decision and making sure that we analyze our customer base to make the right decisions commercially. So we'll have a chief data and analytics officer. We'll also have a chief growth officer and that job title is to do exactly what the job title says, which is making sure that we grow this business in a sustainable and profitable way. And then an operational role, which is the chief of sales and distribution and the regions. To continue to drive our turnaround strategy and stabilize the business and ensure that we've got growth, we have already embarked on this journey and have started to return to growth and profitability, and you will see signs of that in our performance update for the quarter. The improved network quality perception on the back of roaming structured deals that we've now put in place. We really are ensuring execution excellence, so the way we've structured the organization and building a good rhythm, and of course, building staff and stakeholders confidence and that's critically important as we want to be deliberate about having the best culture in the country and of course this is on the back of great board and shareholder support for our strategic drivers that we have already commenced on.
As we've been deliberately driving the awareness and our improved network experience, we're going to show you some data performance which is very clear that we have now improved significantly from fourth place on Facebook Analytics. So a significant improvement on network performance. And on the back of that, we have gone live with a network campaign to make sure that customers take full advantage of the best quality network that they can now experience. We continue to drive our turnaround strategy, making sure that we stabilize the business and ready it for growth. Returning to growth and profitability is absolutely key. Uh, we want to make sure that we continue to drive the network quality perception as we've now done great roaming deals and make sure that customers can enjoy the great quality network. We want to embed execution excellence throughout the organization and really instill the culture of results-driven excellence and build staff and stakeholder confidence. We really want to have the number one culture in the country and have stakeholder confidence throughout.